Hey yo people from the internet! It's been two weeks since my last video, so it's time I make a new one. Basically, I spent most of this time working on something small inside the game, which are simple effects that can really enhance the game that you're playing. Or that's what I'd say if I didn't also wanted to sneak the process of learning the shaders inside the video. So thanks to that, the things I made aren't many, but they required quite a lot of work for someone like me who doesn't know anything about them. But let's go in order with the four simple effects I made. The controller shake, since we added controller support in the last video. The screen shake, just to spice up the moment when the boss uses a special attack or dies. Frame freeze and some little particles for the greys, which are funny because I wanted them to get attracted towards the player, but since I'm dumb, I made them the other way around. If you search around on YouTube or simply in the Godot docs, you see some functions that literally do all the work for you for both of the controller and the screen shake, and also for the frame freeze, which you can actually find a nicely explained video from Master Albert. So all you have to do is convert these lines of code for whatever you want to do. For me specifically, I made two scripts, one for the screen shake and the other one for both of the frame freeze, the controller shake and later on one of the shaders that I made. I made these scripts as globals so I can call them from anywhere with custom parameters so everything is 100% customizable. You can see the code on the screen and it's really not much so I won't try to make the video longer just to talk about them. So let's just skip ahead for what it's been my hell in the bullet hell. Shaders. I guess it's time I pick up an old thing from one of my earlier videos. Do you remember this? I decided to try that one again, so I picked up the tutorial once more, and after hours of trying to understand how it worked and what each of the functions did, I was finally done with the shader. Not really, because I also wanted to be able to use it anywhere on the screen, so I followed another video which was connected to the other one, but from two different creators that Explain though you can um, take one of the game coordinates and turn it to the shader positioning because the shader uses another type of coordinates that aren't on the world coordinates but are on the clip coordinate or something like that. The only thing I know is that we need to convert them if you want to use them in the shader. So after a few trials and errors, I understood and made the code work and be usable from the small effects global script I made from earlier for the non shaders effect. And if you thought that was hard, don't let me get started on the fucking laser I made. Because next on the shader list are the player's bullets. Because you know, I learned how to make circles and I can give them colors, so I try to make them. I even got stuck for a while because the shader kept moving instead of staying on the texture and that's where I realized a really basic thing. The UV, the screen UV and the frag cord are similar stuff but heavily different at the same time. But if I understood correctly, the UV is the texture local coordinates, so they can go from 1 to 1 if the numbers as the name suggests, the coordinates of the fragments Basically, the UV, if you want to have a texture stick to the object you're giving it, use the UV, use the simple UV. If you want something that goes to the whole screen, so like if you have a circle uh, at the center of the screen like I had, use the frag cord and the screen UV I don't know. In the end, that was pretty easy. And I made somewhat good. Finally, the best one I made up until now is the laser. I still don't know how to start on my own, so what I did was watching a video of someone that does something like that. So thank you, Bramwell, for making that video. 
And to be honest, I could have simply copy pasted the code because it's actually pretty hard, but I went out of my way to be able, in the end, to customize the beam. Some will say that it's bad to copy paste, but if you're like me and want to learn, but you really can't understand how to get started from a blank canvas, getting the shaders from someone, understand how they work, and be able to, based on also what you learned before, change the internal code, okay, so not just the parameters, but whole parts of code, is a really good idea to start. So basically that's it. This was probably one of the most hard stuff I had to learn up until now, along with the Godot optimization video. And to be honest, I feel like the worst is probably still there, waiting for me. Like all of the drawing and illustrations that I'll have to learn for when I make the game textures. And also the music.